Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail Clanton 14. Clanton 14 Street Gang is a predominantly Hispanic gang. The original Clanton Vario started in the early 1920s on Clanton Street. During the early years of the gang, the city of Los Angeles decided to change the name of Clanton Street to 14th Place in an effort to discourage the Hispanic gangs from continuing their gang activities. After the street name change, the neighborhood just embraced a new street in 14th place and just added 14 to their name, making them Clanton 14. Clanton gang members became well known by the 1940s and the 1950s. There was a Sleepy Lagoon murder of a Clanton member named Jose in 1942 and also the shooting of a Clanton member named Frank at the LA Coliseum. Then the Zoot Suit riots in 1943 which were connected to the gang activity in that area. People often get confused with Clanton 14, thinking they're a Norteño gang from Northern California, but the 14 has always been used with this gang since about 1952 or 1953, representing 14th Street. Even though Clanton are a Serrano gang, they had never identified with the number 13, like many other Serrano gangs. Over the years, the Clanton 14 has expanded to different areas, like Hollywood, and the San Fernando Valley, among many others, making them have multiple cliques in other areas and also more rivals. During the mid-1960s, new members attempted to start a new clique called Clanton 18th Street, which most Clanton 14 members rejected. This new identity created division between the Clanton 14, and rather dropping the 18, these new members decided to drop the Clanton, becoming a separate identity, now known as 18th Street. As a result from this split, 18th Street began to spread its influence and are now one of the biggest gangs and cliques all over. This will lead to Clanton and 18th Street becoming rivals, along with Clanton being enemies with many other hoods. To start this episode, I gotta take you back in time and some of the incidents in Clanton's history. But with that being said, let's get into some cases. On June 12, 1942, 15 members of the Clanton Street Gang went to the Los Angeles Coliseum to see a track meet they would soon run into several members of an enemy gang called the First Street Gang. After the track meet, the Clantons waited outside for about 10 minutes, waiting to beat up the First Streets because they had them outnumbered. As the First Streets came out the Coliseum, they knew they were in a losing battle. So a member of the First Street started shooting at the crowd of Clantons, shooting one and dropping him. This left both crowds to run in opposite directions. The Clanton members survived and immediately told on the First Streets. The first streets would say the shooting was self-defense, with them fearing being beat up by the Clantons. Several first streets were later charged with this shooting. Shortly before midnight on April 6, 1981, two men, Lowe and Burnell, were walking in Hollywood when two Clanton 14 members, Sergio and F, pulled up on them and asked them where was they from. Lowe and Burnell said they didn't bang, but Sergio began shooting at them anyway, shooting both Lowe and Burnell multiple times. Lowe lost his life, and Burnell was seriously injured, but he survived. About a week after the shooting, police stopped Sergio and Neff. They would have a murder weapon inside the car they was in. Both will be arrested. Both were charged with the shooting. Sergio and F are still in prison to this day. On May 5th, 2004, Sal and Toady from Tunerville went to a bar in Glendale. They were drinking and watching a Laker game. Sal took off his shirt, and this got a lot of attention. Sal's body was full of tattoos, and most was repping Tunerville. The bar that night was full of gang members from different sets, so this makes Sal a target. Several minutes later, Sal was shot in the back. This was a serious injury, making him stay in the hospital for 16 days. Many people was at the bar that night, and a few seen the whole shooting. A man named Rob from Clanton walked behind Sal and started shooting and ran out a back door. Later that night, Rob was arrested. Police couldn't find a weapon, but he had gunshot residue on his hands. It was several witnesses and gets robbed, and he will be charged. Rob's earliest parole date is in 2026. On June 28, 2007, Joe was standing in front of his apartment complex when a car put up on him. It was two men inside of a car, a man named Adam, who was the driver, and Fernando, who was a the passenger. They was both from Clanton 14. Joe had beef with Adam's brother, so Adam challenged Joe to a fade but Fernando pulled out a strap and started shooting at Joe. Joe fled and Fernando chased him down shooting at him. Joe was shot in his lower back, but he survived from the injuries. On August 24, 2007, around 2.30 p.m., Fernando's body was found in an intersection along with an innocent bystander who survived. 
Witness will say a man chased Fernando down and a crowd of people he was with. Fernando would end up getting shot in the back, but once the shooter seen he was moving still, he came back and shot him five more times to finish him off, taking his life. Witnesses would pick Joe out as the shooter, so he got his get back for Fernando shooting at him months prior. Joe was from the Black Diamond Gang. His alibi that he was with his son, but that would prove to be false. Joe would receive 63 years to life for the shooting. On June 8th, 2008, Cat and Gerardo from Ghetto Boys would get into a fight with another crowd on South Hill Street at Miles Bar. This would lead to both men getting shot several times, but Cat wouldn't survive. Enrique, Victor, and O from Clanton 14 would get into an altercation with Cat and Gerardo over their women. This led to fists flying and O shooting Cat in the face and then shooting Gerardo. Clanton group then drove away after the shooting. Witnesses would pick O out as the shooter and Enrique as a man being there. O was the only person charged in the shooting and he received 50 years to life. On January 23rd, 2010, Louise, Dylan, and Roberto from North Hollywood Boys were tagging and riding their hood everywhere on Khalifa Street. A man in all black named Tony from Clanton 14 walked up on them and asked them where was they from. They responded by saying locos. Tony then started shooting at them. Louise was killed and Dylan was shot in the leg. At the scene, Dylan told the police that the shooter was from Clanton 14 and he even picked Tony out of a lineup. Roberto refused to speak to the police. Tony lived right across the street from where he shot his victims and was even on a nearby camera running through the neighborhood, so he was an easy arrest and his fingerprints were even at the scene. At trial, Dylan refused to testify, even though he was the one who gave a statement at the scene. Tony would still get life for the shooting. On November 1st, 2012, a dealer named Carlos told Caesar to call a man named Crook from Clanton 14 to pick up 6,000. Crook and Caesar agreed to meet at San Fernando Valley Park. When Caesar arrived at the park, Crook was driving a white van. Caesar was then grabbed by somebody else from Crook's crew and held at gunpoint. They held Caesar the whole day and took him to multiple places where he would be beat and pistol whipped by a man named David. Caesar told David he wasn't going to snitch, so he could just let him go. David laughed and shot Caesar five times. 911 was called and they found Caesar bleeding out. He told the police that he was kidnapped and they also shot him. He began snitching on the individuals that was involved. Crook and David would be charged for several crimes on this case. Oscar Sr. and his daughter arrived at their home with a birthday cake for one of his sons. He had three, Christian, Oscar Jr., and Mel. They were from Clanton 14. His sons were inside waiting on them. As Oscar Sr. was in his driveway, he seen two men walking by looking strange. He asked them what they wanted and told his daughter to go inside. The two men were named Malo and Diaz. They were from Procoima Brownstone Locos. They had been beefing with Oscar's sons. Milo and Diaz started shooting at Oscar Sr., shooting him over eight times till he fell out. His sons heard the shots and ran out the house and chased after the shooters. Kristen and Mel caught up with Milo, which he ran out of bullets and couldn't shoot them. They beat Milo until he was bloody and knocked him out. The police arrested him on the scene. Oscar Sr. picked Diaz and Milo out of a photo lineup at the hospital. Both Milo and Diaz received life. On October 2nd, 2014, Clan Town members Silly, Loco, and Soldier were chilling in their hood drinking. They began walking on Kenmore Avenue when they were approached by two people. One of the two people was dressed like a woman, but wasn't. His name was Parker. Parker asked if they had drugs, which they tried to sell to Parker. But Parker pulled out a knife and tried to rob Loco. Loco seen the knife and socked Parker in the face. Parker tried to walk away, but Silly pulled out a strap and shot Parker in the back twice taking his life. It was two nearby cameras on the street that caught the whole shooting. Silly got charged solely for the shooting and he received life. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.